folks, I'm Maria Noel Groves, author of Body Into Balance and Grow Your Own Herbal Remedies, and I'm speaking to you today from Wintergreen Botanicals in Allenstown, New Hampshire. And today I want to talk a bit about one of my favorite herbs, and that is lemon balm. And this is just a fantastic nervine and so many more things on top of that. So let's dive right in. Lemon balm is one of my favorite, favorite herbs, and it is also a fantastic nervine among many other things. And this is the first herb that I um, ever really started working with. My mother started growing it in the garden when I was in college, and I was just starting to dive into the world of herbal medicine at that time. And so lemon balm was the first plant that I really started playing with and making remedies with. It's still one of my favorites. I grow it quite a bit in the garden, and I use it a lot. It's probably one of the most used herbs in my apothecary as both a tincture and as a herbal tea uh, for myself, but also for my clients. And so this herb has such a long history of use throughout particularly the Mediterranean. So it is very popular in European-based herbalism and Euro-American settler-based herbalism. It also has a long history of use throughout the Middle East and appeared in a lot of our I don't know if we could really say first herbals because <laughs> there are a lot of other first herbals that came out before them, but kind of like what we think of in the Western herbal world as the first herbals that are still in print. So things like Diascorides, De Materia Medica, as well as Ebencina's Canon of Medicine, both of those classic, classic texts refer to lemon balm as one of the many herbs that they cover. So it has a really long history of medicinal use and particularly around gladdening the heart, relaxing, uplifting. Um, it has a very close relationship with the bees and actually Melissa is a name that is associated with the bees and how much the, the bees really love lemon balm and you'll often find bees, you know, not swarming, but relaxing and chilling out around your, your lemon balm when your lemon balm is in bloom. And, uh, and there are a handful of clinical trials on lemon balm that are really pretty fascinating. The research is still kind of preliminary, but it's definitely supporting the traditions of use that we've had for a long time around lemon balm. Really easy to grow in the garden. If you're watching this, you see that I do have some growing information available on my slides. And if you are listening, you can also access the slides to download and watch them. And I've got just some basic growing information on there as well as some energetics and other odds and ends. And, uh, and so when you're growing lemon balm, it's pretty happy plant. Um, it can even be a little bit invasive. It will sometimes self seed, but also it really grows by underground root runners like many other mint family plants. And uh, it, it can take over if it really likes where it is. And it particularly likes being in like full sun to partial sun with moderately rich soil and some decent amount of moisture, but good drainage at the same time. That said, lemon balm will grow in a lot of different ecosystems and a lot of different habitats. And so if it's a little bit more shady or a little bit drier or a little bit sandier, oftentimes lemon balm will still grow just fine, but it really loves those um, landscape spots where it's, it's just really pampered but not too burnt out by the sun in my experience. And you can harvest lemon balm from early spring until later. I actually have a little itty bitty sprig here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just starting to pop up in the garden. We're in um, April right now, early April, and it's just starting to pop up and uh, it smells lovely. It smells kind of like lemon pledge, so it's not as yummy smelling as lemongrass and lemon verbena are, but it's still a flavor I really enjoy. And often as it starts to pop up, I'll just take like a little sprig and add it to my green tea or maybe black tea and it adds that lemony flavor and some of the healing properties to that morning tea beverage, which is kind of fun. So it's one of the ways I first start really working with lemon balm when it first pops up fresh in the garden. You can harvest it pretty regularly uh, once it starts to grow up and pretty lush. You can cut it back quite a bit and then you can dry it or you can make fresh plant extracts and, uh, and really enjoy it in the garden. It's, it's just absolutely delightful. And it will continue growing, especially if you're cutting it back periodically. 
it'll continue growing right through into late fall and uh, some of my best harvests especially if I'm drying it I find that oftentimes those late season harvests are the best because all those aromatics are better retained when it's not so hot out and burning out all of those into the you know into the atmosphere and so oftentimes my you know September late September October harvest of lemon balm is just vastly more delicious than my you know summer harvest of lemon balm as far as really capturing those flavors also harvesting a little bit earlier in the day you know maybe after the dew dries but earlier in the day will also help retain some more of those essential oils in the final product so medicinally and especially as a nervine lemon balm just does such a lovely job helping us relax but not relax too much just kind of bring things down a notch and improve focus it's one of our great nootropic herbs or sort of smart smart herbs that helps enhance cognition there are quite a few studies supporting that in age groups all the way from kids through elders healthy as well as folks with dementia um, folks who are more neurotypical as well as folks who have ADHD and just a pretty wide range and where it tends to be really particularly helpful is when people are just kind of a little bit either agitated frustrated angry um, inattentive hyperactive any of those kinds of scenarios a little bit more anxious um, any of those scenarios a lot of times lemon balm just does a really nice job bringing things down a notch but still having this calm clear focus uplifted effect and uh, and that's nice because sometimes we do need to be calmed down but we still need to be able to function and focus and work throughout the day or we want to be calm but we don't want to be sedated because we don't want to be put to sleep or we don't want to aggravate depression and lemon balm's often really nice at just being that sort of perfect balance for people and uh, so really lovely great for lifting the spirits it has many other um, benefits as well but that's probably where it's most often used whether you're working with it in the daytime or if you're having it later in the evening to relax unwind support sleep and all that because even if it's not so sedating just the fact that it's calming is usually going to help us sleep it's a very kid-friendly herb as well so really really lovely for a lot of folks so here's just a really beautiful close-up photo of lemon balm i just love how it looks i mean it's not that exciting of an herb in the garden visually but once you form a close relationship and you get to engage with its aroma and you get to see how it feels in your body you will often look at a photo like this like i am and be like oh, it's like just such a nice plant i just really love it so here we have a couple other photos including one of lemon balm that's well one that's a little bit more obvious of lemon balm in bloom the flowers are pretty inconspicuous they're really not that exciting and while in these pictures lemon balm really is like at its peak in the garden it would be a great time to harvest it you will notice that lemon balm once it flowers starts to get kind of haggard and tired looking and so for me this is a good time that i would harvest it make great medicine with it and then i'll get a, an other flush later on that looks really nice but if for any reason your lemon balm starts to look tired maybe it got buggy maybe it got a little too soggy from too much rain maybe a frost came through and now it's looking all you know got little black spots on it or it's kind of cranky just cut it back and oftentimes it will come back really happy and you know give it a next flush that you can work with so don't get too upset if your lemon balm isn't looking too happy in the garden just cut it back and it will usually come back really beautifully so that's all for today i just wanted to remind you that i'm maria noel groves my website is wintergreenbotanicals.com and you can check out my books you can check out my classes and all sorts of free information on my website you can sign up for my mailing list and i look forward to connecting with you in the future so happy herbal adventures <music>